My eyes are even watering. Be, be careful. Oh, yeah, that's right. Jesus. Hey, what's going on, everybody? From First We Feast, I'm Sean Evans, and you're watching Hot Ones, the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. Today, I'm joined by Jim Gaffigan. That's hot. Season two of The Jim Gaffigan Show returns to TV land on Sundays. It's coming to a city near you with the Fully Dressed Tour this That's summer. Right. Welcome to the show, Jim. Well, thank you for having me. I, you know, in my show, there's always a point in the process where we ask the question, what is Jim eating in this scene? Because I'm eating in every scene. What about this? What are you thinking on this one? Uh, I'm a little nervous, but this is, I'm a man. I can handle this. All right, you ready to right. do this? Do we say oh, grace God. first? Sriracha, no big deal. Plus, you're a food guy, so you know what's up. Is that code for your fat? I feel like sriracha, it's so big now. It's, it's huge. Like, it's huge. like the coconut water of hot sauce. What do you think of it, sriracha? I like it. It's also, it, I feel like it's going to peak and disappear. It's going to be like oh. bell bottoms. There's, we're going to be like, ah, I remember sriracha. So I know that you were kind of a high school football star and ended up playing at Georgetown. I was a lineman. I look like a lineman. Not in your picture. You look like. Oh, well, I look like Greg Olson. You could Greg choke Olson. me out. You right. do look exactly like Greg Olson, actually. I know. My assistant saw a photo of me and when, around that time, and he just looked at me and he said, What happened? I said, Food happened. How would you describe your game on a scale from Little Giants to Friday Night Lights? The weird thing is, is like, I, you know, I was an athlete, but in acting, I always get roles of like nerdy people. So I'm always cast as a nerd. And often when I'll meet people on the street, they'll be like, You're bigger than I thought. Like, people think that I'm gonna be this really wimpy guy. But I noticed Joe Gaffigan also on the yeah. roster at that time. That's Did right. you play with your brother? I quit the football team when my brother was the captain, and I quit before I told him, and he was not happy. I didn't fit the personality of the football player, but uh, I guess I, I don't know. I don't know if I fit a type. I'm very good looking. You did stand-up comedy for Pope Francis? No, well, I, I opened for the Pope Mobile. I did stand-up, then Sister Sledge went on, and then the Pope Mobile came in, did a lap, and the Pope hopped out, did his bit. How does that experience differ from, say, shooting a Netflix special at the Vic Theater? It was a completely ridiculous experience. People were going there to see the Pope, and I was going to do stand-up beforehand, so it made no sense whatsoever. And so I'm kind of, I tried to address it saying, look, I know after my set you're probably going to want to leave, but you should stick around, see the Pope. It was a no-win situation, but I couldn't turn it down. How see, this is too hot for me. Uh-oh. I'm gonna die. Am I gonna die? So I wanna give you some um, food head to head since you're kind of the food yeah. god. All East right. Coast versus West Coast, because it's very yes. contentious. Shake Shack, In and Out. Oh, that's a good question. I love In and Out, but that's like the high school girlfriend. And then Shake Shack is the woman I'll spend the rest of my life with. But that being said, I've been you know, in LA doing press and I've gone to In-N-Out at like 10 a.m. They're like, we're not even making burgers yet. And I'm like, I'll wait. Chipotle versus Kedoba. That's no comparison. I mean, so like the idea is that people just can't <laughs> do the interview, right? It's a brilliant concept. How is that being on the other side? Because I don't really know what it's like. It's almost kind of like a manufactured flop sweat. When you first start doing stand-up, you're like, I'm sweating, my tongue's swollen. And it's like, I haven't felt that in a long time. How about uh, Subway versus Jimmy John's? Jimmy John's is beyond better than Subway. Okay. First of all, Subway is kind of corporate, and Jimmy John's has Jimmy John. It's a romantic story of a guy who went to University of Illinois. And Where I went too. Opened a sandwich shop, and now he's like, He's a white trash hero. Are you from Illinois? Yeah, uh, you were born in Elgin, right? I was born in Elgin. Where are you from? Uh, I was born in Evanston, and then uh, spent quite a bit of time in Crystal Lake, Northwest Burbs. You familiar with that one? I lived in Barrington for a little bit, and then I moved to uh, Indiana. My parents met at Barrington High School. No way. Yeah. Did you ever go to Hackney's? Hackney's with the burgers. With the burger, with the rye. Yep, yeah, yep, yep. Yeah. That's, that's a great that restaurant. onion loaf. Always get the onion loaf. That was my that's dad's right. move. Like, when I was that's a little right. kid, we'd go to Northwestern games. Yeah. And then on the way home, we'd stop at Hackney's. That's right. And my dad was like, you always got to get the onion. That's right. That's right. See? We go, we go together. 
Look, it even looks like it's an injured baby. Yeah, be careful with this one. All right, really? All right. <laughs> you know, one of the many pitfalls of being a father, and I know yeah. you have five kids, is that you have to endure a lot of horrible movies and a lot of horrible yeah. TV shows. Yes, a lot of entertainment that's horrible. My dad used to have to do the same thing, but there were two shows that he low-key kind of liked, even if he wouldn't admit it to us. Yeah. And those were Pete and Pete on Nickelodeon, and he liked Elf. What are the shows that your kids make you watch that should be horrible kid shows, but that you low-key actually kind of like? I don't think it's that bold of me to say that SpongeBob is good. SpongeBob is good, right? I mean, the irony is you'll be watching something with your kids that you don't want to watch, and they'll walk away doing other stuff, and you'll just sit there and you're like, I'm watching Jesse. It's pretty bad. So this is the point where you just see someone coming undone, right? <laughs> and I'm like, not even halfway through. You automatically go all the way through. Automatically. But you've had practice. But like, does a boxer feel punches in the face less just because he boxes more? I think so, probably. <laughs> I would say definitely yes. Yeah, this is a delightful one, the hot ones. You like it? It's good. This would, That would be a good one to eat while you watch the Jim Gaffigan show, Sunday night, 10, <laughs> 9 central. You have so you've made a name for yourself with all the uh, hilarious observations that you've made about junk food, but people shouldn't get it twisted because you've really traveled the country and hit some of the best regional spots yeah. in the United States. Yeah. What are some of the things that bother you about restaurants or chefs or foodies? I would rather get a hometown special than a super high-end restaurant. Like, you know, here's a, a quail egg and a bean. The restaurants that are the regional favorites, you don't really see them with Michelin stars all that often, but then the restaurants that are price fix with guys doing chemistry experiments, you yeah. know, those rack them up. The super rich are always hiding. They always want to be by themselves, and so they establish country clubs, and then they go over here and they do this or that, and so some of these restaurants that are like super fancy are not any better than other ones. They just want a, a group where they can be around rich people. Anyway, I'm a great guy. Can't bring you on Hot Ones without asking you about Hot Pockets. Right. I know the Hot Pockets routine had changed your life. I've never eaten a Hot Pocket and then afterwards been, I'm glad I ate that. <laughs> I'm always like, I'm gonna die. Probably get asked about it in every interview. That's quite all right. We interviewed a guy, Versace Pop-Tarts, AKA Thought Pocket, AKA the guy who was kicked off of Vine yeah. for making love to a Hot Pocket. How'd you snag that interview? That exclusive? I yeah. can't believe we didn't win a Pulitzer. In all of your Hot Pocket interviews, has this story ever touched your radar? Yeah, no, about the guy having sex with a Hot Pocket? Yeah. yeah. You, every single thing that's happened to a Hot Pocket gets tweeted at me. Like, people will go into a grocery store and they'll be walking by a, pop, a Hot Pockets and they'll tweet a photo, like, I'm dying to know every update. And it's the same with bacon, but it's fun. It's like, ah, oh, motherfucker. All right. Mmm. <laughs> Is there any part of you that understands where this guy's coming from? Versace pop -tarts. Making love to a hot pocket? <laughs> yeah. Look, I'm a comedian who goes on stage and seeks the approval of strangers, but that's a pretty desperate move. Was he popular on? So he would like have sex with like a box of pop tarts, and that's how he'd get like followers. So, so, and then oh, be like, this wasn't this wasn't the only food that he Hot Pocket out. was just the straw that broke the camel's back with Vine. That's the threshold that Vine established. They're like, that's you know, Pop Tarts, who hasn't gone there? But uh, Hot Pocket, come on, that's the food of champions. So he did he do this? Did he make love to these? No, no, no. We didn't have him on this show. No. I mean, even you can't we, get we him. can't put yeah. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> You can't get him. Uh, my tongue is like three times the size it normally is. What is, are you ahead of me now? No. So I just took a bite out of this. It's called pain, really? Has anyone ever quit? So we've had three people quit. Who are they? They were Tony Yayo, he's a rapper, he's in yeah. G Unit. DJ Khaled, you know that's, DJ Khaled. Similar to me, yeah. And Mike Epps. Yeah, he, he quit, really. At seven. All right, I got a funny story about Mike Epps. All right, so I was at an audition in Queens, and Mike Epps was there, and he was like, he goes, hey, can I have a dollar? And I go, 
yeah. He goes, for the subway. And I go, yeah, sure. So then, like six months later, I see him doing stand-up, and he goes, white people will just give you a dollar. Just go up to a white person and say, give me a dollar, and they will give you a dollar. And I was like, Jesus Christ. That's me. That's hilarious. How bad is this? To me, it's like the worst. Not making me want to do it. My sales pitch isn't actually there. You like Chicago? I do like Chicago. I like Chicago. I like the food in Chicago. Chicago yeah. deep dish. I know Chicagoans don't. If you were to pick a deep dish place, what would you go with? Would you go with Gino's? Would you go with Lou Malnati's? Would you go, I'd go with, with Uno's? Lou Malnati's, that's my favorite too. Do you have an opinion? Because uh, it pops up all the time on the uh, New York versus Chicago thing. Well, I pick Chicago. I do. I mean, I don't think there's really any comparison, though. Ex they're that's so I always different. think that they're so different that there is yeah. no comparison. And I'm always with New York. I'm like, all right, that like thin pizza that's always oily that you can get like three slices for a dollar plus that's a can of Sprite. There. To compare that to what you get in Chicago, that's been like, sitting are you there kidding for me? Four hours. But then again, you have to wait four hours for the Chicago deep dish. It's worth it. Yeah. Oh yeah, so this is the bomb. You know, a lot of people credit you for better or for worse, for thinking about Dunkin' I'll Donuts' take the better, worse. donut I'll... breakfast sandwich and yeah. kind of willing that into reality. Flattery, but I think you look at some of the fast food products, it's inevitable. I mean, there, there's literally. Oh. Are you kidding me? That's not even real. How about if you uh, tried Red Robin's ramen burger? They have the ramen instead of the no, bun. No, that's wrong. That's a sin against humanity. God is not happy with that. Ah, uh, all right. So now I think I'm getting punked. Unnecessary. Unnecessary. <sighs> Fucking, why? That's a fair question to ask us, and I'm not sure I have a great answer. It's not going away. That's unnecessary. All right. All right, you're fired. That's just unnecessary. Jim, are you out? I'm out, fuck this thing. Ah. No, I think I'm gonna stop here, bro. I'm gonna keep it real, I can't, I'm not doing it, man. I'm done, man, I can't do no more. I'm a quitter. Well, I'll keep going because I think I have two more questions for you. You don't feel it at all. No, I do, but I feel a sense of responsibility. You know, there's, uh, there's people no who response. watch this show, I think they would be let down if I didn't take it all the way to the house. You know what I mean? No, not at all. <laughs> the house. Take it to the house. You're eating wings. Does anyone have like a bowl of mashed potatoes or something? So the word dad, it's become such a buzzword in popular culture. There are dad jokes, there are dad bods, there are dad shoes. On Twitter, people call their favorite celebrities dad. And I feel like you've been kind of carrying the dad brand for quite some time. But right now it seems like dads, it's a people are laughing trip. at dads yep. and not with dads. The reality is, is that there's nothing cool about your parents, right? Even if you like them, there's nothing cool about them until you become a parent. Then you're like, oh, all right. I mean, we're dismissive of dads. I, you know, like I said, I don't really care, but it's a little bit like, I don't know if it's serving us. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Do you have any kids? No, I don't. That you know of. Right. <laughs> That's a dad joke. Mega death sauce with liquid rage, made by Blair's, the hottest sauce we have. Where is it made? Highlands, New Jersey. That's where you make sauces, right? It's kind of tradition around here to dab the last wing. I'm gonna do that. So that's made with what? Poison? You think Don't there's lead it. in here? Don't do it. Will cause anus to bleed. Please use with extreme caution. All right, well, here's my extreme it's novelty, caution. Right? It's novelty. There's no one sitting at home going, honey, grab the mega death sauce. I'm making some pasta. I hope not. Makes no sense. Like, this whole thing is ridiculous, and this is a lot. It's the most I've ever done on a wing. How often do you get told you look like Peter Sarsgaard? Never, but I'll take it. Mike Epps said I looked like uh, Smeagol from Lord of the Rings. I get Neil Patrick Harris sometimes. I'll take that one. All right, so. What if just blood started coming down my It might happen. 
<laughs> that could happen, right? You're such a calm and uh, gregarious guy, but I'm sure, you know, somebody who spends as much time rage. on the road as you do in traffic and in airports, there has to be a lot of rage. Oh, that's, you know, I mean, I love living in New York, but it's a, there's a different timing in different parts of the country. Like, you'll go in and you'll be like, hey, I'd like to uh, get something, and people are just having a conversation. You're like, I'm in a drugstore. I just want to buy this and get out of here. This isn't my only human interaction for the day. They're just like, how y'all doing? And you're like, I don't want to talk to you. I just want to get my diarrhea medication and get <laughs> out of here. The, the, you know, it should go like this, and then the last one should be Pepto. Jim. We did it. I did it. You did it. I'm a little impressed. I'm glad that I stopped. I'm glad. Because I have other things to do today besides sitting on the toilet yelling. This is like a food concussion. Like, I quit the NFL before a I got CTE. A couple years early, everyone is just like, he's in you his prime. I mean? Why would he hang up the cleats? And I got like, the money. I don't need to have CTE. Let the people know what you have going on in your life. Well, I just wanted to reach out and tell everyone. Oh, you mean the show? Oh, yeah, yeah, maybe. The Jim Gaffigan show is on TV Land, and then it re-airs on Comedy Central. Set your... Damn DVR. I'm gonna take some plug too, and I'm gonna take yeah. this time to address something that I see in the comments every once in a while. Oh, the, it's a fake show, the sauces aren't actually on the wings, all those different things. Jim, can you just tell the people? These, are, these were real, distinctive, different flavors. Most of them horrible, but they were authentic. And you, I mean, you are part satanic. That's why you can do it, right? That's not a skill. That's not. That's just sticking food in your mouth. All right. Take it from a guy who makes a living eating. But I was impressed. And thank you're, you. You're a better man than me. Thank you, and I'm proud of myself for it, Jim. Thank, thank you, you for coming in. Appreciate it. <laughs>